Greetings to you from wherever you're watching us. Thanks for joining us for the midweek edition of the show. I'm Yemi Adebayo. And I'm Cecilia Omogbe. And this morning we're starting with good news coming from Sunshine Stars. They've had having their coach back. I'm talking about Benga Ogumbote. I mean, he has signed a one-year renewable contract with the club. So he's returning and he says this time around he wants to win trophies for the club. So he wants to repeat the double that he did the last time also achieve some goals with Sunshine Stars. A lot of fans have fond memories of uh, Gwenga Okubote at the club. Will he be able to bring back those kind of times? Uh, we will see. So, Benga is back to the uh, Sunshine Stars. Some call them the um, Akure Gunners. All right. Uh, we leave it at that. So, let's move on and um, talk about this one. Not very good news uh, for West Ham coach David Moyes and two of his players have tested positive for COVID-19 just before their Carabao Cup game. Uh, they received uh, the results uh, and, of course, not a good one for the manager. Yeah, not a good one for him. But then that Carabao Cup, they went on mm -hmm. to win in a very massive way. Also on the program, we talk about the NBA this morning. We're not celebrating the Lakers, but then the Denver Nuggets, they did not even stop because they outlast an epic fight back from the Lakers to claim game three. And they won that game 114-106 in the Western Conference finals. So no heartbreaking buzzer beating from Anthony Davis and because the uh, Devon Nuggets head on to reduce the Lakers series lead 2-1. to one. All right, that's it. That's how we start the show today. Jamal Murray, two, three points, uh, closing out the game. And like Cecilia said, not leaving a chance for any heartbreaking uh, buzzer shot uh, that was going to uh, make them cry on the night. So 2-1. <laughs> uh, and like the coach said, I agree with him. They're back in it. That's what he told his boys. We're back in it. They're back in it because if they had gone three games down and no team I mean the fine will know that we understand that they've done the comeback twice 3-1 and all that mm -hmm. but no team have ever been able to overcome a three, three down. deficit so you it's hard to do that so they knew what they needed to do and the coach said that's the reason he had to play Jeremy Grant mm -hmm. he actually made the difference on the night but then let's take uh, just confirmation of the results from the game of last night game three of the Western Conference it ended 114 uh, 114 I mean that's the Lakers they played against and the Lakers you're talking about is a team at a point they were down by 20 points yeah. so there was this epic fight back, back I was like can Lakers really overturn this at a point they went on 19-2 run and I'm like okay what's happening to the Nugget because at the point this out man the, the, this man yeah. every, every shot he threw was going in it was, was, going in. was yeah, just, that was was just going in when he started to come back <laughs> and to me I think it started slowly maybe that was maybe yes, that was they what slowly. they mm -hmm. they planned uh, I, I don't know uh, but at the end of the day, I looked at the points and I saw Jokic had 22. Yeah. And I'm like, it didn't look like he had 22 because yeah, it was because massive. Were, Jeremy Grant, I mean, had 26 points. As I mean, well, the coach yeah. said he needed someone that he could trust mm -hmm. to feature. I mean, maybe we'll listen to him later because he said if he had not featured a Jeremy Grant, just maybe they would have been 3 nil down. Maybe. So, LeBron James, after giving all, he had a triple-double on the ninth, 30 points he had. I mean, that was really much, but then it wasn't enough. Jamal Murray, you mentioned, yeah. had 27 points on the ninth. But some, somehow, when you're playing a, a, a team that, you know, they're very good when mm -hmm. it comes to defensive and all that, they just had to hold on and just went on to win the game. Credit to, you know, the, the Nuggets mm -hmm. once again because that fight back that Lakers started I was thinking if it was another team they would have crumbled I, I don't know yeah, I, they, I would think have crumbled. they would have crumbled because they just head on just how, how do you manage to do that there were a lot of interesting matchups we can spend the whole day talking about <laughs> this game beautiful game of basketball yeah. I enjoyed every every minute and we're going to listen to you know Michael Malone and uh, LeBron later on but I, I, I don't even know where to start from I mean mm -hmm. uh, Yoki started like a man on fire I mean it was Bullying, 22 uh, points and bullying 10 everywhere. rebounds. He lost team at some point, but his physical mm -hmm. presence on the court. And what else can we say about Jamal Murray? I mean, <laughs> he was just bossing the play. Yeah. I mean, all the moves were, were going right. At some point, I felt LeBron sat back and, you know, maybe they were trying to play through AD. Uh, My, I don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. Coaches know what they do. But gradually, towards the end of the game, and he came on, started dictating, and they were very lucky because if those two last three two three pointers the Jamal Murray sunk didn't go yeah. in 
anything could have happened. It could have happened because that's how they were able to, you know, increase the lead yeah. when it was actually cut down to as much as three points of yeah. But then they needed that. And of course, Jamal Murray was there. Let's listen to LeBron James. What went wrong in game three? Uh, I think it was the same in game two. Um, same thing that we was able to get by, you know, with the AD shot, um, turn the ball over uh, too much. Uh, we put it to the free throw line. And, uh, you know, you, I give credit where credit is due, though. Denver came in and played exceptionally well. For You know, they uh, they were they played better than us, uh, more aggressive than us through three quarters, 36 minutes. Um, but, you know, we got to – I mean, there's in a penalty in the third quarter with like nine and a half minutes to go. And uh, we had some, some turnovers um, that led to uh, some easy bucks for them. We had 16 turnovers for 25 points, and we put them to the line 29 times. So, uh, it's just not it's not going to be winning any ingredients for us um, if we continue to do that. And we knew that. Um, even after game two, we talked about that, trying to uh, assure that. So we got to be better in that game four. Uh, you know, once the defense collapsed, uh, just finding our uh, guys weak side either because the guy that's slashing, you know, through the weak side into the paint, if it's a guy that's spotted up on the out on the on the outside, or if one of our bigs getting behind a uh, behind the defense for a lob. So uh, Denver's been, uh, Denver's been a great, uh, pretty good defensive team all year, and we understand that. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing our film, um, you know, our film session tomorrow, and uh, you know, continue to get better. That's LeBron James right there. They know what to do in game four. And, of course, if they just have two games away from reaching the NBA Finals, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this is what I wanted to see, and I've seen it. Even though coming into this game, the Lakers were overwhelming favorites. Mm -hmm. But let's not forget the Denver Nuggets are comeback kings. Any time people try to dig them, put them in a the hole, they find a way to claw their way mm -hmm. back. And look, I mean... This is where you want to be. It's 2-1. If they win, it's, it's 2 all. I mean, uh, even at this point, uh, it's, it's, it's very good. And like I said yesterday, some of the Nuggets fans were like, oh, if, if, if you are double-teamed, Anthony Davis or Mark DeVere, we'll probably be talking about 2-1. So, I mean, there's, there's that feel-good factor on their side. So, we'll see where. But I cannot lie, it's part of how inspired, how yeah. happy I am with the performance of... The Nuggets, I still expect the Lakers to win. Okay, yeah. All right, let's keep our fingers crossed there. But let's listen to Michael Malone, mm -hmm. the coach of Nuggets. He says, look, the fact that he had to, you know, give opportunity to uh, Jeremy Grant, actually, you know, if he had not given him the opportunity, they could have been three games down. Oh, we'd be down 3-0. Uh, that's the bottom line. Jeremy was uh, spectacular. 26 points, got to the foul line 12 times, uh, made 10. Uh, had really good defense possessions, guarding some of the best players in the world. Um, and, you know, we knew going in what we're going to get every night from Nicola, from Jamal. And then you always wonder, well, who's going to step up and be that third scorer? And tonight for us, obviously, Jeremy came through in a big, big way on both ends of the floor. So, um, you know, proud of Jeremy. It was, a, it was great to see him have some success offensively because uh, he's been working so hard at it. So uh, his hard work was paid off tonight. You know, and uh, especially when you have LeBron, putting his head down and driving, uh, Anthony Davis out there. Um, but we know that there's a lot of time left. No lead is safe, especially against a team like that. Uh, and that's where I'm not sure what they cut it to, Malika, was it, whether it's one or three, but it got to be really close. And that's when I was proud that we gave up our lead, but we didn't collapse. Yeah, that's Malone there. Okay, we'll see. I mean, they had to really hold on. And they just couldn't let that slip again. It happened in game two, and they didn't want that to happen in game three. So game four, keep our fingers crossed, see who's going to take that one. I love the fact that they are fighting back. So we're not going to be seeing uh, a sweep for the Nuggets. Okay, let's leave NBA and... Okay, top performers, yes, mm -hmm. uh, we can't forget that. The guys who put up some numbers, I mean, we already know them, right? We already know them. LeBron okay. James, 30 points, triple-double for LeBron. Wasn't enough, though. Uh, but, I mean, what else can you say about oh, the King? What else, yeah. The, the, that kind of performance, especially when I thought... Maybe when he saw, look, it's not going our way, the tactics is not working, let me step up. A lot of people have always he accused did. him of probably choking or all that. Nah. But this is the kind of performance you want to see. I mean, what else do you expect from a leader uh, in a team... Uh, 
and, and, and he came up and he did it. Mm -hmm. Jamal Murray. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I love, I saw a lot of step <laughs> overs. I couldn't count, step yeah. away, fade away. You know, all of those things. It was just doing it, making it look so <laughs> effortlessly. Easy. Yeah. And they, they, were, they weren't catching him. They weren't, no, they nobody weren't. was coming. Yeah, close. but someone, Rajan Rondo actually caught him. I mean, yeah, he had three steals at the you point. Know, that's what Trace started. Rajan Rondo, <laughs> and then there was a type of the ball from me and gave it to LeBron, and it just went on like that. Yeah, so that was the guy was actually a couple of steals, three he had. I mean, give to the veteran. Right now, he's a sister. He surpassed that of Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, yeah. So that's a good one. Shout out to him this morning. Okay, the games are for the game for tonight. Just one game, Miami Heat, and of course the Boston Celtics. The Heat lead the series to one. This is also even in points. This is a game that no one can even predict because it could just go either way. And I'm expecting game seven and, anyway. And, you so. know, that's what having a result does. When it was 2-0, we were saying it might just be a blowout. No. Now it's 2-1, you're like, okay. I, 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 was, I wasn't for that blowout because nah, I knew it wasn't going to happen. Uh, With this well, game, nah. You're lucky I didn't the, see the, you the there. Yeah, you're Celtics lucky. Not just we didn't discuss like. it. That, but a lot of people, uh, yeah. I listened to a lot of people. Yeah. I read <laughs> a lot of write-ups about people. <laughs> they were already talking about the Lakers, Miami, it's finals. finals. And a lot we, of people we were saying... We could still see that. Yeah, we could. We it's could possible. That, but a lot of people were saying, these guys have an hold to let them cross it first. And they started crossing it straight after that what happened in the yeah. locker room the players mm -hmm. knew that they, they, they were better than yeah. just going out like that they needed to fight back back okay let's talk about tennis round what's let's happening european open hamburg in germany where you have the defending champion two times defending champion is out and of course some big stars never suspected my main Daniel man medvedev your <laughs> guy my is also man. out of the tournament Daniel. but let's start with uh medvedev mm -hmm. you know beating in the first round in Hamburg, not a good way for him to start. You were thinking because he got to the semifinals mm -hmm. of the US Open, then coming here, he should be able to continue that run. But in the first huddle, he got out. I mean, surprising for me. Um, although then again, some some people have their strong strong points, the surface that they like playing yes. on. Um, and here I was, here I was yesterday talking about Robles being in Daniel's shadow, <laughs> <laughs> but then then Hugo Humbert had. <laughs> I had other ideas. He came yeah. to this, played very well. Six four six three. That that's how he won at Hamburg. And um, uh, Daniel will have to look at other ways he could get himself ready for the French Open. Um, if, if you want to take this as an indicator, you want to use it as a parameter, yardstick, yeah. whichever one you want to call it. It's not looking good. You don't a, a top seeded player like Daniel shouldn't be crashing out uh, this early. Uh, at out. the Hamburg Open, and if you're going to lose, lose against your peers, <laughs> lose against your peers. Not, <laughs> no disrespect <laughs> to him, but but yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't see this coming. But we, we'll see. I, I expect him to dig himself out of this, and um, you know, prepare well so that we can see a lot of surprises at the French Open. I mean, uh, Humberg, we know he's an aggressive baseline, mm -hmm. so he's told the show in front of just this little crowd, just emphatic forehand, good finishing, 32 rally shots mm -hmm. at a point, and he outlasted, you know, Medvedev in that 32 uh, rally shots that we just saw, so with an emphatic forehand finish. So he was done, and he will obviously move on to the next one. So for him, I mean, the result is Medvedev, just a record on clay, 10, 17. Not good. Not good. good. It's record, one ten so loss seventeen. Probably not his preferred. No, of course. Surface, it's it's so obvious. Okay, so he was going to focus on the French Open now. How it's going to get maybe to the quarterfinals or semifinals. But and he's in that. at three attempts. He has failed to get past the first round. Okay. So he has his job cut out for him. It's for him to become your really good guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's leave him and talk about another player. Uh, players are who, who made it to the other uh, to the second to the third round. Mm -hmm. Talking about. Um, Fabio Fognini and Alice Sim talking about the Canadian. These two guys made it to the next round. Yeah, uh, Fabio Fognini uh, was up against uh, Philip uh, Koschreiber. Koschreiber got a wild card uh, into this one, of course, playing at home. Yeah. But he made him work. That's what mm -hmm. I like about it. He made him work uh, for this one. 4 6, um, six one, seven, five, And that's how uh, he got the job done. Uh, in this one, and uh, it was close, but at least got the job done, and he has moved on. Karin Kachinov as well yeah. uh, was able to defeat uh, Jan Leonard Struff, 7 6, 4 6, 7 5, and um, you know, able to go to the next round. And the Canadian I talked about earlier, 20 year old Felix Oja Alisim, also advanced. He got the better of Italians, Lorenzo Senego, 6 2. Six seven, two six. seven six. Yeah, that's the result he got. He's also through to the next run. Why these guys are celebrating and moving to the next run, but then there's someone who's also not celebrating. He's out. I'm talking about the defending champion. 
because uh, Bachelors Ville mm -hmm. uh, uh, is... How can his bag in his restaurant? Uh, I mean, no disrespect. <laughs> if you listen to Roberto Batista, I good. Um, no, no disrespect. When you are the defending champion, a two-time defending champion. That's why that I surface. said no shame. He's, no shame. A two-time defending champion he's, losing he's, to he's, a guy ranked number 11 in the world. We're not talking about losing to a uh, player like Novak Djokovic who is on fire peers. right now. They are okay. peers. All right. I get they that. They are peers. <laughs> That's where I see it. Okay. Uh, as two-time defending champion, though, I get, I get where you're coming mm -hmm. from. But if he had lost the way Daniel lost, then I would say that's quite scandalous. But now, look, lost against we probably had a bad Agut day. has, I mean, the only clay tournament Agut has won was actually in 2014. Yeah. And he just won. Mm -hmm. And this match lasted one hour, 25 minutes. There's always a turning Rapid point in anybody's six, four, game. Six, six, three. There's always a turning point in anybody's game. Maybe, I'm, I'm maybe this is Roberto's own. It was so easy for him to, have, yeah. to do it. Obviously, I mean, you expect a, a very good fight, but Obviously. we didn't see that. We didn't, we didn't. Yeah, I admit that. We didn't see that. I admit that. Thank you for admitting <laughs> that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, those are the results from the Hamburg Open. Interesting uh, matches on clay. And uh, as we look for towards the French Open, where all of these top stars will converge and give us the best of tennis and as also uh, probably a sprinkling of uh, people uh, of crowd uh, mm. might be there as well just You're expecting 5000 you know, so we'll see. I, I hope there won't be any issues. I'm very sure the organizers will manage it very well. It's going to be a controlled atmosphere, so I hope they get that uh, done. I expect that, but then you're having one player that said she has just really cancelled her season. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Bianca Adresco. Yep. I, I was I actually expected to see her, you know, uh, on court again, WTA this season. It was one of the last but right now. She, she pulled She's cancelled her whole season. Okay, let's leave that and go to come to Nigeria. Okay, what's talk happening right here? I'm talking about wrestling, talk about Daniel Igali. And um, I mean, he is somebody who uh, a lot of people say a lot of good things about him, and I'm very happy. Uh, he's thinking about, uh, I mean, he has made his intention known, let me put it that way. Yeah. Uh, United uh, World Wrestling, uh, Buru, the elections coming up, he wants to get on that board. And uh, uh, what better representation can Nigeria <laughs> hope for than for someone like Daniel Igali, whose records is impeccable, whose, yeah. whose records anybody can argue against, who surmounted um, all the odds, all the hurdles that has come uh, against him in that federation, and he's doing, he's doing a good job. I, you know, we could wax lyrical about Daniel Egali, but what made me happy coming onto this show this morning, uh, we got to hear that the sports minister, so yeah. sports, sports minister for youth and sports, Sunday Diary, is throwing his weight behind him, uh, saying the federal government would support his candidacy. His candidacy is heartwarming. It's <laughs> heartwarming. Well, let's hear from the sports minister this morning. We were, we were already on an accelerated pace to get as many as of our athletes adopted until COVID-19 came. And that really slowed us down. Some of those I've also promised to adopt were also affected because their companies were short. There was a general downturn. But we have picked up again. And I do recall clearly that you are also a product of an adopt initiative in Canada. And that was where you actually hit the peak of your performance. The Ministry of Youth and Sports will support your candidacy for the, the borough, United, uh, United uh, World Wrestling. We will support you. We will work with you to do the necessary letters. We will make the right pronouncements. We will make the right contact. We think that uh, for us, to get a black person there is important. But more importantly, the fact that wrestling is one of our key sports where we have competitive advantage, we think that having you uh, in that place will be good for us when it comes to global sports. All right, as the sport minister there, just training support for Daniel Igali. He said he was a product of you know, the adopted talent in Canada, and he went on to win a gold medal for you know that country. And right now, he's the president of you know wrestling in Nigeria. He's also the commissioner for sports in Bayelsa State, so he's got a lot of experience and all that. And with the support that the sports minister is backing, obviously he will you know make it better yeah. for wrestling in well, the world. One thing I learned from from my old man, which is somebody who is in marketing, he says it's always easy to sell a good product. 
Yes. And I think that's what's happening here. Mm. You don't have to put too much effort. Just mm. mention his name yeah. and uh, like, okay, if, if you are in doubt, <laughs> if you are in doubt, just go and read up on the guy. It's very that. easy to sell a good product. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy the government is backing him. I hope that he gets the opportunity to be on that board. Yes, that's what we're hoping and praying for. All right, we need to go on a short break. When we'll come back. We'll be talking more on sports, especially having Alice Morgan talking about the fact that she, you know, she was really happy to join Tottenham Passport. Welcome back. We have our guest in the studio, Femi Faraway. He's right here. Good morning. It's good to have you. Hey, it's great to be here. Good morning. Yeah, second time. Promise us you're going to be here in UK. And he's right here. I, I, yeah. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's, let's bring you to all that we're doing on the show. And uh, there's a lot of interesting things we've been talking yes. about. Yesterday, we told you uh, about sporting icons. Um, we're going to celebrate 60 years of independence in a few days' time. And uh, we're talking about the heroes of our labor's past that uh, we should nominate a lot of people. We're also going to continue with that on the show today as well. But, you know, get us talking. What, what do you feel we should be talking about? What, what are your views? on the NBA playoffs? What are your views on tennis? Amber Copert, what are your views on in, this inactivity on the domestic scene, talking about sports? Uh, Benga Gubota is back with Sunshine Stars. A whole lot of issues to talk about. The mild drama in Barcelona with Luis Suarez. A whole lot of issues. Uh, let's talk about it on the show uh, this morning. And just to remind you, like I said earlier, as we look forward to celebrating 60 years of independence, we want you to Tell us sporting icons you want to celebrate. Uh, a lot of people have done so many great things for Nigeria in the world of sports. And sadly, a lot of them have been forgotten. Sadly, a lot of them are not remembered. And I think it's a good opportunity as we approach Independence Day to talk about some of these people. I have a lot of names in my head, but it's your job to let us know. We on this side won't say anything. But it's your job uh, to let us know uh, about it. Uh, let's uh, also, to get some perspective on that, let's listen to Mary Yali talk about that issue, uh, talking about ministry's efforts to celebrate top 60, um, 60 spot icons uh, on uh, Independence Day uh, and efforts to ensure that these people are remembered and given um, their due in terms of recognition. From the sports ministry, the minister has uh, initiated that 60 top athletes, 60 top icons, present and past, be nominated to be celebrated. How sweet would it be for you to be nominated by the public, not by the ministry, to be in the top 60? It would be a thing of joy for whoever makes the top 60. We threw out there for the general public to do the nomination so that we'll get a general view of what people's uh, uh, opinion is about this uh, Nigeria at 60. It's going to be um, a very huge celebration for the sports ministry because we are going to use the velodrome to join all the 60 top selected uh, athletes, icons that will be uh, nominated and they will be unveiled and viewed by the public for 90 days. So you have 90 days to come to the velodrome at the uh, Moshuda Abiola Stadium, Abuja, to see and take pictures and read and hear about your favorite sports icons. So Nigeria 60 is going to be a blast starting October 1st, but the nomination will even be more interesting. All right, uh, nominations will be more uh, interesting. But, but let me go to Femi. Um, we are not allowed to say some stuff. I, 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 can, I can tell you when the camera is not on me, but I can't say that. But you are allowed to. Mm -hmm. um, if you were given the chance, and what are the names that come to your head that feel this person didn't get their due, or this person got their due, more should be done? You know, I think it's a brilliant idea first to start off mm -hmm. um, 60 years, but celebrating with some of the biggest names mm -hmm. to have represented Nigeria and contributed feats as well for the development of the country. Mm -hmm. And when you ask about 60, we can mention a thousand. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But I think the best thing would be to select from every era. Every era. Because yeah. there's some eras that I saw, there's some eras people before me saw, and there's some younger, younger than me ones. also saw. So we should select. Uh, Mero Yali stands out. Mm -hmm. She's obviously done well as well. Mm -hmm. The Olympic Games, uh, representing Nigeria, the All Africa mm -hmm. Games. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. You can talk about Kano Wanko, yeah. is a name that comes to mind as well. Rashidi Yekini, uh, despite being late, is also another name that mm -hmm. tops your mind. Stephen Keshi. Yes. Uh, we could go back to Nigeria's Shebo I mean, the mm -hmm. first uh, victorious Africa Cup of Nations team. Uh, Aaron Okodri for table tennis mm -hmm. right now stands as one of the biggest names. So we can select 60. Shabu and I love Toriola. Oh, stands. <laughs> Funke Funke Oshinaike. Oshinaike. Yeah, we can <laughs> mention even Daniel Gali back in there. Yeah. We can mention even his contribution because when we say sports, we're also talking about even those who contributed in other ways yeah. beyond just the feat they've done on the field. So there's a lot of names. I, mean, I, I just hope when the ministry is streamlining the names, they put names that a lot of people can get no, to know. They're about. not the ones bringing it. The way it is now is left for the, the viewers, Nigerians, mm -hmm. to select Fans. the names. You can select as much as one, a million names. That's I said, so we'll they'll select... now pick the top 60. Uh -huh. So it's the names that you give to them, that's where they're going to pick from. If you oh, give them, okay. bless, bless no Kagbari, oh, you know, Kagbari there's so many, out. there's so many so stars many you can, mm -hmm. I just have to show her another, might even fall into that class. Mm -hmm. We're talking about sports icons. Mm -hmm. Those players have actually done so well in mm -hmm. the country. And I think mm -hmm. it's not up to the fans, it's not up so to the people bring up the to names. push those names. Out. I mean, I, I could sit down here and remember, but I can't say it anyway. Uh, you know, boxers who play yeah. independence. Yeah. I think such guys, yeah. and, because and those guys helped to put Nigeria on the map. You know, and that's the tricky thing. When you mention selecting, how is the selection process? If Good. you put it on social media, mm -hmm. only yes. young people will vote. So you get all the young athletes you mentioned. Mention people in their era. Well, you're talking about Okoro Judo, for example, the older boxers mm -hmm. who contributed to Nigeria's development. You need to have those sort of names on it. And that's mm -hmm. why I think the ministry also plays a big role in saying, yeah. all right, let's go through the list. Mm -hmm. We have a thousand athletes or a thousand former athletes for Nigeria. Who and who can we put here? Tell their stories. This is the opportunity to tell, tell their, their stories. stories. Because Nigeria is 60 years. We've come through a long way. Mm -hmm. 60 years of different stories, different culture and tradition. It'd be good for us to also get the same thing with the ministry, put in some of those athletes that we can sit back and say, oh, this guy performed at the Olympics, this guy performed at the mm -hmm. All-Africa Games. Because back in the day, the All-Africa Games was a big deal. Yeah, it was. Well, yeah, so it would be okay. good to get some of these stories. All right, so uh, let's talk about people who brought glory and honor to Nigeria so that uh, their, their efforts and labor will not be in vain. Mm -hmm. All right, let's quickly uh, talk about uh, some. I was very excited when she was talking about this. Benga Ogumbote, um, it's become a beautiful bride, sort of, in the <laughs> Nigerian uh, professional uh, football league. has been associated uh, with um, a lot of um, good things. Uh, but, yeah. but the news is that, um, uh, you know, just confirms the worst kept secret anyway, yeah. because yeah, we always knew it was always <laughs> going to be good. But, but, but how do you react to this? It's a fabulous story for Sunshine Stars. Okay. I don't think the news or their performance in the past few seasons have been yeah. sort of what they want. I listened to the interview from the uh, chairman, and some of the things they said was, number one, they want to ensure they take it back to the glory days. They challenge. Now, we know his history with Sunshine Stars yeah. took them to the semifinals. Everyone knows how that went as mm -hmm. well. Unfortunately, since then, they've not gotten close. Uh, he's gone to Enyimba Rangers, Lobby, and has gotten one trophy in that space. Yeah. But he's not won the league. Mm -hmm. and I think that could be the first incentive. Start off from small. Let's build a good team because there's a lot of Max Exodus at Sunshine Stars during the break. Get a good team get them competing. Once you get them to that stage, then obviously you start setting higher targets, the continent, uh, maybe challenging for a continental title. Everything comes into perspective. One year contract, for me, that's a little short, but we've renewable. seen renewable. renewable. But it's yeah. just, it's good to know, okay, you'll be here for the next three seasons. You'll be here for the next yeah, two seasons. Yeah, you want to settle. You, you think it's because of the uncertainty, a so. lot of things I that happen. So. so he just wants to I Let me just so. do this season. Let's see how I think I'm feeling. So. I think so. By the because end he's of... a top manager. If he yeah. doesn't get it right this year, you'll get another suitor coming for mm -hmm. him next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take a quote, you know, coming from him after it was unveiled. Uh, after the signing, he said that he wants the team to really double up and make the best out of it. Okay, he wants to thank everyone that made this return possible. My philosophy is beauty in the game and success. Hence, I want to resort everywhere I go. And the good thing here is that the standard is already there. We must work on it and aim even higher than before, as anything below is not possible. Okay, went further to say that we must repeat and double up on what we did in the past to achieve our goals, unity of purpose from all stakeholders. That's really important. It went further to say that the management, government, state assembly, the FA supporters and others, I'm happy 
to be back. So he's back at Sunshine Stars, the Oracle himself. Mm, he stylishly okay. called everybody. National Assembly, state government, <laughs> fans. He needs, he needs their needs support. support. Yeah. They're all stakeholders. Uh, From everywhere. He, he needs all of them. All right. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the news about Benga uh, Ogumbote. Let's also talk about something um, that needs to return to his pride of place in uh, Nigeria. Let's really talk about um, the Principal's, Principal's Cup and somebody associated with that. A lot of beautiful stories. Everybody seems to have, probably the younger people under 25 may not have too much to say, but if you're mm -hmm. older than that, you will have a lot of good things to say mm -hmm. about the Principal's Cup and uh, too many, many beautiful stories. But Daniel Amokuchi is somebody that, um, when well, you mention his name, everybody knows uh, who he is. But let's listen to the beautiful stories, how he recounts um, all of those things that happen and it's fond memories of uh, the Principal's Cup. And don't forget, we talked about the Principal's Cup here yesterday, about some of the other sports added um, to it as well. He is now the special advisor to the president on sports. It's come a long way, but it all started with the Principal's Cup. Let's listen to Daniela Mokochi. I took a pledge that I will represent Nigeria when it comes to football just because of the Principal's Cup. Uh, we tried in 87, we were knocked out in the, in the quarterfinals. We tried in 88, and I am a Principal Cup winner. Just to just let the young students who are here today how massive the Principal Cup is. I didn't just win the Principal Cup. I was given a scholarship by the Cardinal State Government to study in, in Texas, in America. That's how powerful the Principal Cup is. It's not just about football, it's about representing your nation and giving you a step in your life. Okay? So we should take it serious. And in the latter years when we grew up, we tried as much as possible to see that each government, each ministry that come to fold to revisit the principal cup, but to no avail. And behold, we were blessed with the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sport, Mr. Sunday Diary who has the same passion for Nigeria, who has the same passion for sport, and who knows what he needs to do for the youth of Nigeria. All right, that's it. Dale Lamokji said, said some things that I, did, I, I didn't know, but how inspiring can that be? Very inspiring, I think. You yeah. know, I, I give credit today to what the ministry is putting together, and mm -hmm. I'm saying it's because you're thinking about ways to develop the youth, yeah. and not just beyond empowerment, but also through sports, mm -hmm. something that worked many years ago. Now, the Principal Cup obviously had its rough time after those periods you mentioned, the glory days. It mm -hmm. spoke about scholarship, spoke about exposure, traveling. All those things don't exist anymore. Now, people just play, oh, well, we've played. Mm -hmm. But when you're bringing this sort of idea, and that's why I clap for the performance, because you've got ambassadors like Miriam Yali on board Nigeria. You've got Daniel Amokachi, Dosu Joseph. These are stories. These are people with inspiring stories. You listen to what they've gone through. And you can obviously say, oh, I want to be like Henry Wosu in future, Stephen Keshi, Samson Siasia. Mm -hmm. They're all products of the Principal's Cup. So I think it's a brilliant idea. I just hope that we get it right. Because the minister said he wants it to continue even after he leaves office. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if he does that, it means that we've it's got brilliant. a system to continue it's producing. Yeah, Irrespective of who's holding that office. That's and the wish. What I really love about the fact that is they're not focusing on football alone this mm -hmm. time around. They're mm -hmm. having track and field at mm -hmm. it, but mm -hmm. meeting and yeah. some other big sport that, you know, mm -hmm. that we're really good at it. So to get equal happens, attention. I'm just hoping that maybe someday they might think of basketball. That's sort of the... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 also join that, not just table tennis, but meeting and football alone, but track and field, but then it can also include basketball with time. Okay, let's leave that to staying with Nigeria, of course, or talking about Nigerian women's football league. We don't know when contest sports will return, but no, of course... Uh, from all the federations and all the presidents have been talking about it, waiting for the government to give them the go-ahead. Of course, the sports minister has already said that the, the House of Assembly and uh, the PTF are also looking into it. While we're waiting for that, all the leagues across Nigeria are trying as much as possible to ensure that when they say, OK, it's time for you to go play football, everyone is ready. And that's why the Nigerian Women's Football League is actually releasing uh, you know, the guidelines for teams that want to participate. Remember, they released one earlier before, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that actually ensured that, OK, teams will need to have the medical teams and mm -hmm. all that. But this time around, they went a step further to say that, look, we're not just saying you meet only those standards and all that, paying registration fees and everything, but then more regulations are focused on uh, development, integration of women participation in football at all levels. And one of it is that their clubs must submit to NWFL an audited annual report of the activities, and which is going to include in-depth evidence, uh, 
The fact that they are not owing money, yeah. profits mm -hmm. or loss, sponsorship, a clear evidence of payment of players' salaries in the previous season, and also a detailed list of category of salaries of players for the new season. So clubs <laughs> must also ensure in, clubs must also ensure all registered players covering injury, accident, and in case of death. So mm -hmm. all players must be insured. NNL have already partnered with insurance company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think NWFL can also follow that so it to be easy for them. And also they said in the quest for them to have uh, development in the technical area. So they would not be having coaches that are not qualified. So the minimum mm -hmm. qualification should be uh, NIS. Uh, mm -hmm. You must have at least a certificate uh, from the NIS credentials attached to it. That's the list, the minimum qualifications they will be having. So it simply means that if you don't have any certifications from NIS or equivalent or anything, you will not have access to the coaching crew. So, and also, they also want at least having two women to be part of the technical bench. All right. Without any sarcasm, do you, do you think any of our teams will meet up? Yeah. I feel the technical parts. Yeah. That's yeah. the first part that came through. Because the other things Cecilia mentioned are requirements. Basic. Basic, Basic. sponsorship, I mean, they said this auditing, mm -hmm. insurance for players. If you're ready. If you're ready. And that's important. Because what we saw with, from the Cross River team, mm -hmm. we can all mention a lot of other teams also had issues. But the technical angle, because I think that's the major part that the Women's Football League is struggling with. Uh, you get a game on. You have two coaches who are knowledgeable sitting on the bench. I've seen a lot of women's football games in Nigeria, even as high as the Super Bowl Falcons. Yeah. And sometimes you question the technical know-how of the coach if you're getting orders from players. What's going on? But you know you've got two people on the bench who know, brainstorm, think yeah. about what to do, and then contribute to the game. It will mean, number one, we'll get better inputs in terms of coaching. We'll get better performance from the players. Mm -hmm. Sometimes well coaching, as yeah, well. coaching is just a little difference that makes a bigger team look better yeah. than a smaller team. That's just true. a small thing. And I know NIS is the minimum, mm -hmm. but it'd be good to see them stretch it a little further, just a little further. Maybe we get something good, but like you say, start small and continue to grow, and I love it. Mm -hmm. I think right. it's good. Right. So it simply means if you don't have other requirements, if you don't submit, I mean, your list of coaching crew with details, attachments of the credentials and all mm -hmm. that, with a minimum of NIS advanced course of study, obviously, you may not be as allowed long to participate. As we don't have anything blocking it. Yes. Because usually we put out all these things and then we'll somebody says. I mean, somebody you, says. you know, the spot, the ministry is actually, the, the eyes are on all the clubs across mm -hmm. Nigeria. They've already mm -hmm. said that even if we have three or four clubs, it's okay. we'll just go ahead. So if they you have those requirements, they can meet up. I mean, yeah. if they do that, another, most of the clubs are owned by state government and they see that, okay, mm -hmm. only for four women's league, uh, four teams you have in mm -hmm. the women's league. So what happened to the others? Why are they not playing? They start asking questions. Of course, okay, these are the requirements. They need to meet it and they join. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's leave that. And Okay. I mentioned Alice Morgan. Yes, I'm really happy that she's I mean, in England. There's this influx of the, the, the women's uh, so the soccer League in the US, you know, mm -hmm. actually coming to England. You know, England have done enough, you know, in developing the women's game. That's what they found out. How many, when did they start? Started not a few, mm -hmm. few years ago, but they have the sponsors with, you know, the mm -hmm. Barclays coming in and all that. So they're able to attract big players. You know, Alice mm -hmm. Morgan, remember she just gave birth. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she, because, and, uh, a women's soccer league in the US because of COVID 19, they're on yeah. break, and the players needed time to really play yeah, football. Sure. And all of them, from Toby Heath with Match Team, uh, Christian Perez, also with Match Team, yeah. coming, yeah. coming in. Coming in. It's, coming in. it's brilliant. It's, um, she's been one of the biggest stories or biggest names in women's yes. football. Uh, the pregnancy story came through as yeah. well, and we all thought, oh, is she going to be out for quite a long time? <laughs> and I listened to the hunger she spoke of when she came to Sports that, yes, it's a loan deal. But I want to ensure that this one year I do it so well. If there's the option to stay even longer, fine. If not, I return back to the U.S. She's a World Cup winner. So that means yeah. we know she'll give her best. For Spurs, I was pretty surprised because Spurs got this player. I'm they're surprised not, too. Yeah, they're not <laughs> the name you'll pick at the top of your list. You probably would have gone for maybe Chelsea. Chelsea, yeah. yes. Or someone, Liverpool Chelsea. or someone else to come, come through. But, or Manchester City. But I was pretty surprised. But great one as well. It means that the league will be very well lit. When it does start. 107 goals and 43 assists in 169 games for the U.S. She has won the World Cup 2015 and 2019. So Spurs, they're having a superstar right there. I believe this will also attract more fans to come. But mm -hmm. we know that his fans are not allowed yet. I mean, the few games that they played earlier where some fans were actually allowed to the stadium. But from the new directives, no more fans. So this 31-year-old will have to just play behind closed doors. But she's going to keep fit. I think Orlando Pride is a place where she has spent four seasons before she came to uh, England. Let's go on a break now. When we come back, we'll be listening to her.
a great one for, for, from Alex Morgan. So it's good to be having her journey spurs on loan uh, this August. So she will be here till we don't know how long, she says. Doesn't she really can say mm -hmm. depends on your on the whole thing and everything because she didn't have time to think. How do you leave your kid? And, okay, let's not dwell on that. Uh, you go to Carabao, where? Cup. Carabao Cup, yes. Let's quickly United. take a look at the results. Mm -hmm. United were in action. Uh, okay, the flatter resort, yeah, they managed to win. Uh, <laughs> you have to say that. You have to say West Ham 5 1. That's why the fact that David Moyer is, you know, mm -hmm. the assistant coach players, had to step no? up and our two players test their post for coronavirus. They still won 5 1 against Hull City. Now, Luton Town and Manchester United, it was flattery because United struggled. Uh, first half. The, the first goal was, you know, courtesy mm -hmm. of a penalty, of course, and one matter converted. And the other two was when Rashford, Mason Greenwood had to come and even they had to rely on. Fernandez, all of them to come, you know, in the second half before they could get the three new victory. Newport and County to the Watford, I mean, what's wrong with Watford? West Brom and Brentford went to penalties and of course Brentford won five, four. But United let's talk about, yeah. Focus, yeah. But let's talk about the United game, uh, Dean Edison, um, mm -hmm. a goal. It, it looks scrappy, uh, mm -hmm. but, but I always try to hold back my comments. Uh, let me take a neutral perspective. I agree with Cecilia that, that the result is flattering. So well. well, yes, like, it is. Game. But like they always say, a win is a win. Yeah. United are through to the next phase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a little amazed at how United struggled. And it's, I think sometimes you have to push some of the blame to the coach. Okay. The system, Igalo played, started yeah, out till Greenwood came off the bench to replace him. And really didn't contribute enough. Yeah. You know how we all said a uh, favor over labor, the story, but Igalo just seems like an alien now in that team. Doesn't seem proper fit. Uh, but United will move over to the next phase and hope to build on from it. Yeah, that's what they need to do. They don't have a choice. Okay. Let's leave that and quickly go to Frank Lampard. Yeah. yeah. Frank Lampard, okay, he has confirmed that Mendy, Edward Mendy is actually coming in. And of course, all eyes are on Kepa. Will uh, Edward come and, you know, become the number one? Frank, Frank Lampard is really not giving out anything this morning. You see the way um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has backed David De Gea. Mm -hmm. Do you think Kepa has got that kind of backing from Frank Lampard? I don't think so, but I also think the performance Kepa has put out doesn't the, call for that kind, kind of backing because it's just been below, below, way below the standard for Kepa. Uh, two games this season, two horrendous mistakes for a top goalkeeper, a Spanish international. I don't think it goes through as well. Um, they here, they here can go back to the old days and say, "Look through what I've done here." So I'm probably just going through a blip. Okay. But for Kepa, hasn't even cemented a reason for people to say you're a Chelsea great. And that comes through. So the story of Mendy, Senegalese international, 28 years old, I think it automatically tells Kepa that you'll probably be second choice. And wow. that puts a lot of pressure on him. Lampard right. in the first game spoke about what he thought Kepa could do. And I thought that was the first time he said anything in that direction. But to be honest, to be honest and to be fair, I think Kepa is below the standard for Chelsea. Uh, you think Lampard has had enough? I think he's had enough. I'm surprised <laughs> because this is the, um, for Chelsea to go for this transfer, they pushed it far. There was Oblak on the list. Then they went for uh, Mayagnan, the uh, Lille goalkeeper, before getting this one. All right. Uh, let, let's play a little thought for Cecilia said it, but, but let's tell, let's play a little for, before go take a look at the papers. Uh, David Moyes, uh, the West Ham uh, manager, testing positive. Uh, though he's team one, that must be said. But how big of a blow do you think those things could be? I think it's a big blow because West Ham are going through a lot at this moment. Uh, started the season, two games, two defeats. Uh, it seems as though there's problems already. And Moya, as we know, is the guy who knows how to wrestle relegation battle. Mm -hmm. But this, at this time, and then it's a Diop, the other player as well. Mm -hmm. That's one of his key names. So it's going to be a big miss if both of them will not be on the touchline for the next game. Oh, wow. All right, big miss uh, for those guys. Uh, we, we'll see what happens. Um, David Moyes, all the best. A lot of people have recovered, so yeah. uh, hopefully yeah, it's it automatic. So that's, that's yeah. a good thing. So no symptoms. That's yet. a good sign. All right. So uh, we're on the own stretch. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the papers. Let's see how far we can go. Uh, let me start with what I have here: Complete Sports uh, in the, the out of Eagles October friendlies. I injured, I'll be out for a few weeks. That's Complete Sports, the midweek edition. Mbappe more likely to renew PSG deal. There have been talks about Liverpool and uh, Real Madrid. We don't have time, but can you comment on these two stories or any other one you well, like? For me, indeed, it stands out. Um, if he misses out on it, the question comes on who will Raw draft into that role because okay. indeed is a key name for the Super Eagles. Onyeka is one of the names that has been mentioned. Uh, Mikel Lago probably also wrestled as well to put his name back in the conversation. Uh, there's also the standby list. Probably one of them would also slip over to join this. Con this and Ogera uh, Garrett are always available to play in all those yeah. uh, midfield rearrangements. And Mbappe, 
Is it more likely that he signs a PSG deal or he goes to Liverpool? No, I feel, I feel or, he would or Real Madrid. I think he would leave. At some a point. new challenge, obviously. You have to go out of your bubble. Okay. I think he's conquered France. The next place would be somewhere else in Europe. All right. Okay. Let's go to sports in life. This one Murata passes medical, uh, Juventus medical. These guys keep getting top clubs, okay? Uh, he's back at Juventus <laughs> <laughs> or in the out. They were just so there in the game against. Uh, Cut the Voir and Tunisia and Messi tempted to go to Arsenal. Okay, mm. okay. I had a you know, that's my reaction when I saw it. <laughs> just, just like that. That's my reaction you know, when I saw it. Sometimes you can just dream, right? Yeah. It's possible. No, but it's possible because at the end of the season he becomes a free agent. Yeah. Okay. So it's very possible. I, I don't, I don't know what the attraction no can be. There will be no transfer deal. Yeah, it just that goes wherever it just goes with whatever personal terms he agrees to. Okay, all right. Osimhen <laughs> <laughs> listed Nigeria's edges are Ronaldo after a dazzling debut. That's talking about Serie A team mm -hmm. of the week. That's right. a good one. And 73 million euros is simply not enough for Sancho. That's what Dortmund chief is saying. Let me just quickly take one tweet before we wrap up. We can't take more than that one. Uh, Bosun is saying this morning that, uh, okay, He's got a list of, okay, there's so many. From Chidi Imo, Innocent, Ibuniki, and Miriam Yali, there are many. Shagon uh, me and all that, there are many. The list is, and the Jerry Okoro Dudu, he knows all this, that Egon Teriola and all of them, and Musa Atanda, I mean, there's so many. Mm -hmm. And he went for that to say that, generally speaking, I think the narrative should change from celebrating sports icon posthumously. We can copy an induction into Hall of Fame as yeah. done by the Americans. Let's celebrate sporting icons they when here. they are still alive to inspire and encourage upcoming talent. All Great right. one, thank you so much. Yeah, a good place to leave it. But first, we have to thank Femi for away for honoring us with his presence. Hey, thanks. All right, um, we'll do this again some other time, hopefully. <laughs> Promise on live TV again. Okay, thank you for allowing us to be a part of your day. We enjoy doing this. We'll be back here again tomorrow. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye bye now. I'm Cecilia Morgbe. Thanks for watching.